We're joined this morning by the Right Honourable John Gummer, Lord Deben. Lord Deben was previously the Secretary of State for Environment under previous governments and currently he serves as the Chairman of the Committee on Climate Change advising the UK Government. Now Lord Deben, I notice that climate change seems to be coming once again up the agenda in the, in the news and particularly this week with the tragic events in the Philippines. It's also seemed that over the past few years, climate change has been pushed maybe to the back of the agenda and, and cost, cost of energy has been of a higher political significance. Do you perceive that with something of a recovery in the economy and some of the headlines that we're seeing, that once again climate change could rise up the political agenda and therefore secure the investment climate for alternative energy? Well, of course, the real fact is that facing and dealing with climate change and uh, getting out of the recession uh, are not uh, competitive because if you look at the industries which have been uh, increasing fastest in the British economy, they are the green industries, very significantly. So that, I think that uh, uh, contradiction that is seen is first of all false and it will be increasingly seen to be false. So the whole background uh, is changing. Um, secondly, we're going to have to have alternative means of uh, generation because we are so dependent upon uh, those outside us for what is the absolute necessity for any uh, industrial nation. So uh, for energy sovereignty we need to have uh, renewable energy because that does give you control over your, over your energy source. And we need it also because the idea of being dependent upon an ever-rising price of gas, and that seems to me to be, for most people, the most likely picture. Uh, you need an insurance against that, and therefore, again, renewable energy becomes the answer to that. And what I'm looking for in the Climate Change Committee, and we've advised the government, and the government has accepted that, and the opposition is also entirely on side, is that we need a portfolio. A portfolio of energy sources in which renewable energy, offshore wind, photovoltaics, uh, I think increasingly tidal, all sorts of things will actually make their contribution. But offshore wind is going to be very important, and I think photovoltaics too. Okay, actually interesting you should say that because it leads into the next question. I actually noticed that the International Energy Agency is saying that Europe is currently dependent on imported hydrocarbons for 65% of its energy needs. By 2035, that's likely to rise to 85%. Now, in that context, can we continue to depend on gas as we do in the UK for, to a large extent? Or, as I think you've already hinted, renewables should, take, should play a much larger role, not only in the UK, but actually across Europe. Well, we could depend on it, but if you're going to do that, you put yourself in the hands of Mr. Putin's children. And you also put yourself in the financial uh, uh, grasp of those who have the gas. And it seems to me that what is happening is that people are beginning to realise that although you might get some gas from fracking, um, the idea that we're going to be in the same position as the United States is entirely wrong. And gas is, of, after all, not a renewable uh, uh, energy, and what's more, it's a fossil fuel, so it does create very considerable uh, uh, amounts of emissions. Uh, what we need is something that's dependable, which cont is continuous and doesn't produce those emissions. And although gas will play a part uh, over the next 20 years, it seems to me that it will be, towards the end of that period, a significantly diminishing part, and the place of renewables will become very significantly greater. I was in Birmingham last week and I saw Ed Davey speaking at the Renewables UK conference and he was very bullish about the continued support of the government for support for renewable energy. It gives us a lot of confidence that the, uh, the, the future um, is, is fairly bright for investments into this sector, but can you concur with that, that the government is going to continue to stand by the commitments that allow the underwriting of value in investments in renewables? Well, it seems to me that there's no country in the world in which the security is greater. First of all, because the Climate Change Act uh, uh, takes many of these uh, things outside the passing decisions of government, because uh, Parliament has already legislated for the carbon targets and the budgets right up to 2027. Nowhere else in the world where you've actually got legislated that. 
Secondly, we have a statutory requirement to reduce our emissions to 80% of uh, uh, 1990 levels uh, by 2050. And you have to have a program for that. That's why we've got the targets. And, and thirdly, we've got a climate change committee which has statutory uh, uh, powers uh, to ensure that these targets are met. So you, you have a structure here, and you can show that very clearly because uh, as a result of the advice of the committee um, and uh, the view of government, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, even in this very difficult time, has committed £7.6 billion pounds worth of money to be spent between now and 2020 towards the decarbonisation of the electricity system. Well, I don't know anywhere else where that commitment is there. So it's not surprising the Germans are now actually discussing having a climate change act of the sort that we've got. Okay. Finally, um, today we will have a number of investors in the room, institutional investors, investors who are either already LPs of Glenmont Partners or are considering being so in the future possibly. If you were talking about the security of their investment in this, uh, in, in this area, either past or, or future, would you have any advice for them? Well, uh, rather like their own advertisements, uh, <laughs> things can go up and go down, so you uh, are never certain about things. But as far as it is possible to be certain, it seems to me that uh, uh, investing in renewables in the United Kingdom is enormously uh, good. And it's good, first of all, because the government is committed to it and the opposition is committed to it. It's good because no possible government that you could see for the next uh, 15 years um, is other than committed to it. It's good because we have a structure in the Climate Change Act which means that we set these targets well ahead so that you aren't constantly buffeted by the particular issues which are on the electoral uh, uh, programme at any particular time. And thirdly, it's good because it's in the interests of Britain in a way which is probably unique. First of all, we are hugely dependent upon energy from elsewhere. And we are a nation which is acutely conscious of the need for uh, en energy sovereignty. And one has to say that many of the countries upon which one depends at the moment for one's energy are not countries whose regimes are stable and are not countries whose regimes you necessarily want to be in hot to. We're also a country that understands that we've constantly been pushed off our economic course by the rising price of energy, in particular of gas. All the indications by those who know best of it suggest that gas prices will go on rising, that although we're finding more and more gas, the truth is that the demands of uh, a growing population and particularly a growing middle class population throughout the world will put even bigger pressures on that. And therefore we expect uh, Asia and uh, particularly to be taking a much more of, a, of, of the energy that is available. So we'll need to protect ourselves against that. And, and that will be a continuing issue. And, and the the only way we can do that is by indigenous forms of energy, the biggest one of which is, is, is uh, our own ability uh, to produce uh, renewables, particularly offshore wind and, and where we have a very significant uh, and remarkable uh, opportunity. So I, I cannot see that um, there is another place in the world where the security of our structure the governance of our system and the absolute demands of our people come together in quite that way. Thank you very much, Lord Deben. Thank you. Thank you.